Hello and welcome to the webinar on AnyLogic and Microsoft Project Banzai end-to-end -end workflow, reinforcement learning for business application. My name is Arash Madavi and I'm your host today. Today, as our guest presenter, we are thrilled to have David Koh, who is a principal program manager in the Project Banzai team and a 15-year Microsoft veteran. David's role is to work with customers and partners to integrate their simulation products and solutions with Project Bonsai. He has helped customers use Bonsai for everything from engines to manufacturing systems to baggage operations and even 3D modeling of athletic shoe design. David was previously the Regional Director of Transformational Solutions for Microsoft's Great Lake region. He has been involved in many high-profile partnerships, including Ford Sync and Delta Airlines baggage handling. In today's webinar, David and I will discuss how you can bring deep reinforcement learning and the machine teaching capabilities of Microsoft Project Banzai to practical business applications utilizing the state-of-the-art simulation capabilities of any logic. Okay, let's start the webinar. As you can see in the agenda, David will start this webinar by introducing us to Microsoft Project Banzai and how to get access to it. He will then give us a quick overview of reinforcement learning. I will then briefly talk about the significance of the AnyLogic Microsoft collaboration to bring deep reinforcement learning to practical business applications. I will then discuss the differences between a regular simulation model and one that is ready for reinforcement learning, which will be referred to as being RL ready. Using a simple example model, I will walk you through the additional requirements of an RL ready model, including the wrapping process that transforms an AnyLogic model into a Banzai simulator. David will then show us how to add the machine teaching instructions via the Inkling language, create a brain in Banzai, and how to perform the training both locally and on Azure. He also will show us how to export the trained brain as an Azure web app. Finally, I'll show you how you can connect the trained brain back to your simulation and run it with the trained brain controlling the model in an optimal way. At the end of our presentation, David and I will be available live in the Q&A session to answer your questions. Okay, now that we've reviewed the webinar agenda, David will introduce us to Microsoft Project Banzai and Reinforcement Learning 101. Hi, my name is David Coe. I'm a Principal Program Manager on the Project Bonsai team for Microsoft, and I'll be talking today about how to integrate Bonsai with AnyLogic. To get started with Project Bonsai, you will need an Azure subscription. There is a great tutorial on our Bonsai documents, aka.ms slash bonsai dash docs, and if you go to this site, Go to Introduction, How To Guides, and then Account Setup. There's a great walkthrough on obtaining first a Microsoft account, and then signing up for an Azure subscription and associating that Azure subscription. You can actually get a free uh, trial subscription by going to your favorite search engine, type Azure Sign Up, Click this first link and start for free here. Once you're logged into the portal, <clears throat> your portal may look a little bit different depending on the resources that you've created in the past. You may see your recent resources and other things. You see, I happen to have a Bonsai service here, but if you don't have that, um, you can search for Bonsai right at the top. Click the little tree icon, and you see I have multiple Bonsai subscription workspaces in my current Azure subscription. But if I just go to Add, and here it's asking me to go ahead and create that Bonsai service. So inside of a resource group, I can either uh, select an existing one that I may have, or I can just create a new one. So depending if you got access from your company, uh, the level of permissions that you were granted, those types of things uh, may depend on, on whether you can do this or not. Uh, but once I've got this workspace here, or this resource group rather, 
I'll call this the AL webinar bonsai space. And then I have to choose a region. Bonsai is currently in the West US 2 or West US region. Doesn't matter which one I pick. And I go through and I confirm uh, which subscription I'm using, what resource group this is going to be created in, and then note my name, AL Webinar Bonsai Space. Once I click Create, it might take a few minutes on your side to go through this creation. You'll see your deployment is underway. It's inside of this resource group, AL Webinar. Now what's happening behind the scenes is a couple of things. One is we're, we're setting up the workspace creation for access to Bonsai. You can see that uh, that resource was just created here. It's under the autonomous systems namespace in Azure. The other thing that's happening is we're actually creating a second resource group uh, dynamically for you. And that's where we're putting the Azure Container Registry, uh, where your container instances, once we upload the AnyLogic simulator, uh, as well as the Azure storage for when you upload a file, we put that inside of your subscription as well. So I can see that my deployment is complete and I go to this resource. Of course, I see my welcome to Bonsai and launch workspace, but I don't see any of those other things. So if I go back uh, and I search my resources, I can either find my resource groups here. But see, I've got this kind of funky name, Bonsai RG, AL Webinar, Bonsai Space with a, a GUID here. And this is the stuff that I'm going to need a little bit later when we talk about how this gets deployed uh, into when you want to use this for uh, kind of prediction later on. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit and talk about how you associate uh, your AnyLogic model with the Bonsai workspace. Bonsai is a reinforcement learning platform uh, with machine teaching that kind of sits on top and abstracts away some of the complexities that often come with reinforcement learning. But if you aren't a person that has interacted with reinforcement learning before, understand that it's sort of a combination of a number of disciplines from engineering, computer science, psychology, mathematics, and think of underneath the covers, there's a neural network. There are sets of neurons that kind of connect to each other, similar to the way that our brains work and fire neurons as a way to sort of transmit information. Similar to the way that humans learn by practicing with sets of rules if they're going to learn a new skill, reinforcement learning also learns by practicing and interacting with the environment uh, that it's going to learn from. So for example, with any logic, we're learning from the model. The model is used to pass information to the AI agent. In the case of Bonsai, we call that a brain to trial different scenarios that it can see. In order to do that, the model passes information to the brain that we call state, what's happening within the model. The brain will then take an action. That action could be move left, move right, could be to set a value to a certain number, those types of things. And the model will respond by performing that action and giving feedback to the brain of what happened based on the action that the model took. This type of sequencing back and forth of state action results is the common paradigm that you see in reinforcement learning. And you may have seen reinforcement learning in multiple areas like video games, uh, the game AlphaGo, uh, ancient Chinese game Go, and AlphaGo being able to help solve playing that game. And more and more, you're starting to see it applied to industrial solutions. And that's where Bonsai comes in. We're taking this paradigm of reinforcement learning, applying it to industrial concepts, and then putting an abstraction layer over it so that subject matter experts in those, in those concepts don't have to understand how all of the mechanisms and the algorithms work underneath the covers.
So to take that loop a little bit and make it a little bit clearer for you, we have our simulation here. Uh, in our case, it's an AnyLogic model. And that's going to provide state to the bonsai brain. That brain is going to then take an action and give feedback, uh, in this case, like the reward, to the brain. The reward can be positive or negative, letting the brain know uh, that the action it took was good or bad. And then we take this and we scale this dozens of times over so the brain learns at a faster rate how it's performing based on the state information that's there. One common question that we get from people is, where does DRL and Bonsai kind of outperform other AI you know, things that are out there? You may have heard of supervised learning. You may have heard of unsupervised learning, like clustering. Maybe you have linear programming in your organization. So where does Bonsai kind of outperform? And in general, there's three areas where we talk about. The first is uh, extreme robustness requirements. So if you have a control system or an optimization engine that requires many different settings to work well under multiple conditions, a lot of times there's a, uh, when you have programs that are set to work, they can't really adapt to those different types of, of environments that they have to perform in. And DRL is very good at doing that. The second one is if you have multiple or changing sets of optimization goals where you have an existing system that might struggle with multiple things that it's trying to optimize. A good example of this is in a, a building scenario where maybe you're trying to optimize for air quality, for temperature, and for cost. And so how do you support those sort of changing dynamics you know, depending on how many people are in the building, uh, what are the costs associated with that, how much carbon dioxide may be in there so we have to keep the air quality up, uh, et cetera. So DRL is a great use case for those changing optimization goals. The third one that we commonly see uh, is this notion of operator overload. So maybe you have somebody that's responsible for monitoring a plant floor or monitoring a wind farm. And oftentimes what happens is people have these dashboards in front of them and they show a lot of alerts. And over time, people have learned to kind of ignore some of those alerts or they recognize that, oh, this, this alert that's there really just means X, Y, Z has happened and I can kind of ignore that because, you know, Bob over there is, is doing some maintenance and I know what's happening. When humans get this type of interface, it's complicated for them to start to recognize and filter out the noise to help make those decisions. And that's something that we commonly see uh, is DRL being able to do is do this sort of decision support scenario where we can make a recommendation to a human without necessarily having to take a direct action uh, on, say, a robot uh, to make a, a move or something along those lines. As you've heard from David, there are two sides to any deep reinforcement learning setup, the environment or simulator and the AI agent or brain. The learning agent experiments in the environment and by reinforcing desirable outcomes learns a control policy. Almost all the learning environments or simulators that are currently available are either games, toy examples or physics based models. However, the dynamic simulation community is well aware of the fact that there is a mature and established breed of simulations used for business applications in the past few decades. As the market leader in simulation modeling for businesses, AnyLogic has a large user base among industry leaders in multiple domains that have already used simulation for their most complex problems. The addition of deep reinforcement learning and the machine teaching capabilities of Project Bonsai open a new dimension into novel types of simulation-based solutions that are geared toward adaptive control policies. To simplify the conversion of simulation models into learning environments or simulators, we have developed a simple to implement procedure in which you can convert a regular AnyLogic model into a Project Bonsai ready simulator. 
This procedure involves modifying or designing your model to be RL ready and then converting it into a project bonsai simulator by the help of a wrapper model. But first, let's take a look at what is an RL ready model and what the requirements of such a model are with an example. I'm going to use the term RL ready in this part of the webinar, so let me explain what I mean by that. An RL ready simulation model itself is not that much different from a conventional simulation model that you're familiar with. I'll explain the differences between the two in three areas, model purpose, how it functions, and expected outcome. The purpose of a regular simulation model is to better understand the dynamic behavior of a complex system, usually under uncertainty. Simulation models are very capable of predicting the future state of a system under different conditions and scenarios. On the other hand, the purpose of an RL-ready simulation is to provide a training environment for an AI agent or using Project Bonsai's terminology, a brain. Model functionality. In regular simulation models, the entirety of the simulant's rules are incorporated in the simulation model albeit at some level of abstraction. The model will function on its own and can simulate future states of the system. In RL-ready models, some of the decision rules are delegated to the learning agent. Therefore, it is not complete on its own and only works in conjunction with the learning agent that intervenes in the model by taking actions that are delegated to it. Modeling outcome. A regular simulation model can be imagined as a rule-based and dynamic prediction machine that is used by a human to experiment and explore possible futures within the purpose of making informed decisions. The outcome of the model would be a report about the possibilities and maybe some recommended actions. In contrast, an RL-ready simulation model is used by an AI agent as a playground to experiment in and learn how to beat the game. Over many iterations, it can master the environment and learn the best policy for taking actions. Now that we have learned how an RL-ready model is different from a regular simulation model, it is time to talk about how to build an RL-ready model or refactor a regular model into an RL-ready one. A simulation model that is used for enforcement learning delegates some of the decisions or actions that are being taken throughout its execution to the AI agent or Bonsai Brain. With the Bonsai Connector Library, this is implemented by pausing the model at the moments that the delegated decisions should be taken. We'll refer to these moments of time as the episode step. These pauses can be at predefined time intervals, for example every six hours, or at specific events in the model, such as callback fields of process blocks, condition-based events, or transitions of state charts. An RL-ready model should be able to set a desired configuration as the initial state of each simulation run or training episode. This will let the brain gain experience from a variety of starting situations as expected in the real system. It should also be able to communicate its current state to the brain through observations. Each observation is one or more numerical values that communicate the current state of the simulator in a succinct form. And finally, the RL-ready model should be able to implement the chosen action by the brain for the part of the model designated to be controlled. An RL-ready model should have an explicit criterion or criteria to end or terminate each of its runs or each episode. The termination criteria that signals the end of an episode or simulation run could have different forms. For example, it could be a predefined end time or a condition that detects an invalid or irreversible state of the system indicating to the brain that the current path chosen deviates so far from its goal that it's not salvageable by any number of future actions. Since we are using the project Bonsai, our RL-ready model should be able to connect and communicate with the Bonsai platform. The RL-ready model will need to add the custom Bonsai connector library to the AnyLogic development environment and should be wrapped in the provided wrapper model.
In the next few minutes, I will use one of AnyLogic's example models named Activity-Based Costing Analysis to demonstrate in detail how a regular model could be refactored into an RL-ready one. I will then prepare it to be used as a simulator in the Bonsai platform with the help of a wrapper model. Keep in mind that this model and the policy that we learn with the help of reinforcement learning are relatively simple. The purpose here is to make sure the end-to-end -end workflow of using any logic models with Project Bonsai is described in a clear and easy to understand fashion. In future webinars, we will introduce you to more sophisticated and complex scenarios. For now though, we've decided to start with a straightforward example and focus on the process and not the application. As I mentioned, to better explain the wrapping process, we are going to use the ABCA or Activity-Based Costing Analysis model. If you want to later download a copy of the model that is wrapped and ready for training, first go to the Bonsai page on AnyLogic's website and click on the download link for the ABCA model. This will navigate you to the ABCA folder in the Bonsai-AnyLogic GitHub repo. To download it, navigate back to the main project page where you can download the samples by clicking on the code button and then on download zip. I also am providing the direct URL to this page on the bottom of the screen. Within the zip file, there is a folder named samples in which you will find both the ABCA and product delivery examples. The ABCA model that you downloaded from this link is wrapped in a slightly different way compared to what I'm about to show you. To be clear, the model that comes with the download is already wrapped and is ready for brain training. In the following steps, I will be showing you how to prepare the model starting from an unwrapped or clean state. An unwrapped version of the ABCA model that is similar to what I'm using here will be available to you as part of the supplemental material of this webinar. If you want to replicate my steps, you will need the unwrapped version. Another thing to clarify is that I'll go through all the steps of the wrapping process, but I won't show every single specific change that was made in the model itself. I am only using the ABCA model as an example to demonstrate the steps which you can later apply to your own models. This model is borrowed from the AnyLogic example repository and refactored to be used as an RL-ready simulator in Bonsai. The ABCA model is about a simplistic factory floor model where cost associated with product processing is calculated and analyzed using the method known as activity-based costing. Each incoming product seizes some resources, is processed by a machine, conveyed, and later releases the resources. The goal is to reduce the cost per product while maintaining a high overall throughput. The complexity of this optimization arises from the fact that it is a non-stationary Poisson process because the arrival rate of the production orders is not constant and could be a value between 0.5 per day up to 2 per day. There are four parameters that can be tweaked to minimize the cost. Resource A capacity, resource B capacity, mean process delay, and conveyor speed. At the same time, the backlog of products in OxQA should not exceed its capacity of 45 agents. Relatively speaking, figuring out an optimal control policy that tweaks these four parameters to find an optimal outcome is easy. As mentioned, the complexity arises from the fact that the arrival rate is changing. I'm not going to go through all the small modifications that we made on the original model. Those who are familiar with any logic will be able to easily find them. However, there are two main changes that are directly related to the RL training. As I'm showing here, we have a cyclic event called Bonsai event that pauses the simulation every six months. This would be the moment in time that the model triggers the reinforcement learning loop. This would be used if each episode or each simulation is run for more than six months with a non-stationary arrival rate and the brain is expected to learn how to adaptively change the four input parameters to keep the production cost to a minimum. 
The second important modification in the model is the addition of a Boolean variable named exceeded capacity. As I'm showing here, in the unenter field of aux QA, we set this variable to be true if the current size of aux QA has its capacity reached. The exceeded capacity variable is used by the brain as a flag that the current input variables failed to keep the production flow at a desirable level and resulted in accumulation of unproduced product orders in OxQA. Okay, now that we understand the ABCA example model and the main changes that we've done to the model itself, now it's time to go through the steps of the wrapping process. You should take this time to simply observe the process so you can later perform the steps at your own pace. What I call wrapping in this webinar is the process of incorporating your RL ready model into a model named Bonsai Wrapper. This model already includes all the needed dependencies to make the proper connection to Bonsai. To start the wrapping process, there are two necessary assets that are available for download from the AnyLogic website that I'm showing right now. By clicking on the wrapper and user guide button, you can download a zip file called AnyLogic-Project-Bonsai that contains both the connector library and the wrapper model. The Bonsai Connector Library is a custom AnyLogic library that under the hood is used to communicate between your model and the Bonsai platform. The Bonsai Wrapper is a special AnyLogic model that is not intended to be used alone. Instead, your model will get incorporated into it. By using the Bonsai Wrapper, the setup process is simplified as it comes with the required components that you simply need to fill out. Now it is time to go through all the steps of the wrapping process using the previously reviewed ABCA model as an example. The first step would be to add the Bonsai library to any logic. When you unzip the AnyLogic project Bonsai file, there is a folder inside called Bonsai library. Inside this folder, there is a jar file of the same name. You should move or copy this file to a place on your hard drive where it won't be moved. Inside any logic, you'll need to add the library by clicking on the small plus sign on the lower left corner of the palette panel. Select Manage Libraries and then select Add. Browse to where the library jar file is located on your hard drive, then confirm all the open windows. You will only need to add this library once to any logic. As long as the jar file is not moved or deleted, it will be available to all your future projects. From this point on, I will be using the ABCA model as an example. A similar process is applicable for your own model. First, I will open the desired model to wrap, in this case, the modified ABCA model. Then, I will open the Bonsai Wrapper model alongside it. At the moment, these are two separate models that are open side by side. In the next step, we will wrap the original model into the Bonsai Wrapper model. I will double click on the wrapper agent type within the Bonsai wrapper model to open it. Now we are ready to merge the original model into the wrapper in one simple step. All that needs to be done is to drag and drop the root or top level agent of your model, main in this case, from the project panel into the wrapper agent. While agent types are typically instantiated from within one model, in this case, it is being done across two separate models. When you do this, an object of the original model is instantiated inside the wrapper agent type. As you can see, all the animation from the model's root agent will appear inside the wrapper agent. To check and see if the original model is successfully merged with the Bonsai wrapper, click on the model name from the projects window. In the properties window, you'll see that the original model is introduced as a dependency. What this means is that this wrapper model would not run without the ABCA model also open. You can also see that the Bonsai wrapper model comes with the Bonsai library listed as a dependency by default. In this step, we incorporated the original model into the wrapper. From this point on, running experiments from the wrapper model will also run the original model. This is because the root agent of the original model, main, is an object that lives inside the wrapper. The next part of the process is to define your model's configuration, its action space, and its observation space. 
For these, note that there are three Java classes included with the wrapper model. Model config, model action, and model observation. Each one will require you to add Java variables representing the type and name of each attribute you want to include. Currently, the Banzai platform allows these fields to be integers, doubles, or arrays of integers or doubles. I'll start by first modifying the model config class. This class defines all the variables that you will want to initialize each episode with. This class may be left without variables declared if you always want to use the default model values or if the initialization configuration happens as part of the simulation logic. In the ABCA model, we have double and integer variables that set the initial values of five parameters and one non-parameter value. Variables that are defined here are accessible in the episode start field of the Banzai connector object, which we will review in a few minutes. Next is to modify the model observation class by adding all the variables that are needed to define the observation. Observation is an object containing information that the learning agent is given about the current state of the environment. These values will be populated at each episode step with the code in the getObservable function that we will complete in a few minutes. In the ABCA model, we will pass 18 values as the observation taken at each step. However, in Banzai, it is not necessary to use all the information contained in the observation as an input to teach the brain. In your inkling code, you have the choice to only use a subset or even a derivative of this information as the observable state that is used to teach the brain. As you will see in this example, only the arrival rate will end up being sent as the observable state that is fed to the brain. Finally, we need to modify the model action class by including all the variables that the brain will pass to your model as input for control. The values passed from the brain could be either used directly or as indicator for what action should be taken. For the action in this example, we declared four variables that will let the brain to directly set the values of the four input parameters which significantly affect the cost per product. The episode step field of the Banzai connector will use the values of these variables to take the action. We'll edit this section in a few minutes. After configuring the Java classes in the Banzai wrapper model, there are two items in the wrapper agent type that need modification, the getObservable function and the Banzai connector. Let's start by first modifying the getObservable function, which associates each element of the observation specified in the model observation class with a proper output from the model. By default, the getObservable function instantiates and returns a blank model observation object. In this function, we just need to associate the values we defined in model observation class with their respective values from the simulation. One important point here is that since the original model is instantiated as an object inside the wrapper agent type, any reference to the model will need to be made through that object. For example, if you look at the ABCA model, you'll see that every time that we needed to access a part of the original model, we use the prefix main dot. In this case, main is the name of the instantiated root agent and the dot gives us access to the attributes inside the main agent type. One other important point here is that if you want to call a function in the original model from anywhere inside the wrapper agent type, the access field needs to be set to public. By default, it is set to default. For example, the total cost per product function is defined in main and called in the getObservable function. Therefore, if you go back and check the properties of the function inside the main agent type of the original model, you'll see the access field is set to public. Now it's time to go back to the Banzai connector object in the wrapper model and complete what we've started in the model config and model action classes. There are several fields that we will come back to in the Banzai connector object, but for now, our focus is on episode start and episode step. Let's start by the episode start. In the episode start field of the Banzai connector, we have access to a local variable called config, which is an instance of the model config class 
previously defined. It's passed to the connector from Banzai with the values to initialize the model with. This field will be triggered at the start of each episode before the model begins running and lets us to initialize each episode with the desired configuration. For example, in the ABCA model, the if statement checks if Banzai successfully sent the configuration to initialize the model with. If it did send one, we set the parameters in the ABCA model with the values received from Banzai. Next is the episode step field. We have access to a local variable called action, which is an instance of the model action class and whose values are provided by the brain. Specifically, after your model pauses the simulation, the observation is taken of the current run and sent to the Banzai platform. The brain then determines an action to take and sends it back to the connector library, where it uses the code in this field to implement the specified actions. In addition, you can update other parts of your model that are not directly related to the action values. For example, resetting some statistics gathering elements. In the ABCA model, we update the four parameters in the model based on the values that we received from the action object. You can also see that aside from the actions, we also reset our statistics and cost-related variables at each episode step. As you can see, the wrapper has the getObservable field assigned to the getObservable function by default. If you have changed the name of the function in the wrapper agent, you will need to update this field as well. The last field related to the reinforcement learning loop is the halted field. This is where you define the condition for the end of an episode, which could be time-based or condition-based or possibly even both. An important point to make here is that if you want to define the halting or terminal condition in your inkling code, the halted condition in the connector object should be set to the Java keyword false. Going back to the properties of the Banzai connector, we need to fill the three fields that are required for authentication and establishment of the Banzai connection. Workspace ID, access key, and simulator name. Workspace ID and access key are accessible from your Banzai workspace. From the Banzai web UI, you can find your workspace ID by clicking on your email on the upper right corner and then clicking on workspace info. In the next window, you'll find your workspace ID, which then you can copy paste to the Banzai connector. To get an access key, you should click on the new access key plus sign and then copy paste the generated key to the associated field in the Banzai connector object. For the simulator name, you can provide any desired string that will be shown in the Banzai workspace when you establish a connection to the platform. I have to mention that there is a second way to use the wrapper model. In this alternative way, instead of easily dragging your main agent into the wrapper agent, you would copy paste all agent types, elements, and assets of the original model to the wrapper model. The setup of the Banzai connector object would then follow the same process to what I've described so far. You will still instantiate the root agent in the wrapper agent type of the Banzai wrapper model and then go through all the steps that I've demonstrated in the first approach in almost an identical way. The only benefit that the second approach provides is that it makes it easier for distributing models as you only need to open one model and not two. However, I highly recommend using the two model approach which does not require moving all of your original model assets to the wrapper model. The ABCA and product delivery examples that you've downloaded from the GitHub repo are wrapped with the second approach. I also have to mention that we are actively working on improving the connectivity of our already any logic models with Banzai. In the future, we may substitute or improve the wrapping process. Going back to our model, there are two experiments that come with the Banzai wrapper model, animated experiment and headless experiment. The animated experiment lets you see the simulation animation during each episode while the brain is training. This is a good way to visually verify the training process and also observe the evolution of the brain's decisions as it gets better in controlling the simulator. You can also use this experiment to see a trained brain controlling the model. The headless experiment is identical to the animated experiment, 
but is entirely code based. After running it, you will only see feedback through the logs in the console. The benefit to this is that the training is more efficient and faster to run because the overhead needed to drive the animation is removed. For both experiment types, you only need to execute them. Nothing in the animated experiment or any of the code in the headless experiment needs to be modified before running. If run from inside any logic, the animated experiment or headless experiment will use your local machine hardware to run the simulations to train the brain. Local training also means that only one simulation would be run at a time to train the brain. But in real practical scenarios, training the brain to a desirable level will take hundreds of thousands or even several millions of episodes. In these cases, it is essential to be able to scale the simulation executions and run parallel simulations. For this purpose, you will need to export the headless experiment as a standalone Java application and upload it to Banzai. The platform will handle scaling the simulation execution on the Microsoft Azure platform. To export the model, you would right click on the Bonsai wrapper model, then select export and then to a standalone application. In the window that opens for the experiment to export, select headless experiment from the drop down menu. Choose a desired destination folder and then press finish. Inside the exported folder, first delete the Chromium folder. Navigate up one directory and then make a zip file of the exported model folder. This zip file is what you will upload to the Banzai web UI. David will demonstrate how this will be done later in the webinar. So far, we have learned how to transform a regular AnyLogic model into an RL-ready simulator and how to make it connectable with the Banzai through the wrapping process. Now I will hand it over to David so that we can learn about the Banzai side of the RL setup. I mentioned a little bit that the benefit of Banzai is being able to abstract away the complexities of reinforcement learning. The way that we do that is through a proprietary coding language called Inkling, which is just a declarative, statically typed language programming uh, for training an AI with Banzai. If you're not a programmer, it's okay. Uh, we really want this to be much more feeling like a configuration type of file than to feel like you have to be a programmer to do this. But this is where you take your subject matter expertise you know, in the, whether it's in a manufacturing process or other things, and be able to put that into code uh, in a way that helps the brain learn to apply concepts the same way that you would apply uh, as a human. And so we have kind of key aspects in the inkling language. We have things like a concept. A concept is the core thing that you want the brain to learn about. Uh, in in more complex scenarios, you'll start to see multiple concepts where you have a brain that's learning, how do I kind of trade off one aspect or another? Inside of a concept, you have a curriculum. The curriculum uh, allows you to kind of outline the things that you want the brain to learn. And you do that through a series of lessons. So you may have one lesson, you may have five lessons, you may have other lessons there. And the lessons feed into that configuration that we talked about at the start of an episode. So, you know, you may see that the brain is working on that first lesson with that first set of configuration. As it masters that lesson, it starts to go off uh, and tackle the next lesson that, that's there. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the idea of reinforcement learning is that you have uh, a state you then take an action against that state and you get a reward. One of the new uh, features of Bonsai is this idea called a goal. One of the more complex things, in addition to the algorithms that sit underneath reinforcement learning, when you're trying to apply reinforcement learning to the real world is how do you sort of structure these goals, these reward functions, uh, reward functions. And so one of the things that we've done is be able to, to create something that are called goals outlining what you want the 
uh, brain to achieve, but not necessarily how to do it. And so if you go out and you use things like, I want it to drive to a center point, or you want to uh, avoid some range of values, or you want to maybe maximize profits and minimize cost overhead. These are all sort of keywords that we have uh, for goals. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, to be able to drive uh, certain values that are here. And so inkling is a way to kind of outline how this will work uh, inside of your particular brain uh, as you start to build this out. For the uh, activity-based costing model, uh, we've actually given you the inkling. Uh, so here I am in the GitHub. It's, it's publicly available. If you just go out to uh, github.com, Bonsai AI, Bonsai AnyLogic, click on samples and then ABCA, you'll see our activity-based costing model. Uh, there's an overview of kind of what activity-based costing model is. Uh, effectively, what you're trying to do is figure out what's kind of the optimal configuration at the minimal cost per hour, uh, figuring idle costs and other things to be able to do this. But inside of our inkling, you can see we have our states that we talked about. So this is the states that our any logic model is going to give to us. We have uh, what's called an observable state. So the idea of an observable state is your simulator may send, you know, five or six different values, but the brain only sees what's in observable state. Uh, in this case, it's just the arrival rate. The action then is what the things are that the brain is allowed to do. It can set certain values within ranges and these little things, uh, kind of with this less than one, the two dots to 20 means any number from one to 20 uh, inclusive. So it could be one, could be one and a half, could be 10.72583, uh, et cetera. Any of those would be valid uh, within these ranges. In this case, I have four. You have to have at least one value. Uh, and we'll talk about if you get too many actions, that's when you start to look at the breakout of, of multiple concepts. But for this, we just kind of have four values that we're, we're setting within those ranges. We have a config uh, value here, so we can change sets of parameters around you know, when things are arriving, what some of those initial values are, our buffer size. And you can see we have this simulator statement here. Uh, again, since we're sitting in Inkling still, we have a simulator that we call capital S simulator that takes in the action and the config, and it's returning the state. Uh, you notice we also have this thing down here called a sim action. So because we set the ranges from 1 to 20 uh, with any number in between, our model only accepts kind of full decimals, 1.1, 1.5, it wouldn't accept the funky 10.3, you know, 10.35, kind of a thing. And so we have a little bit of logic in here to just kind of round the values to the nearest hundredth position. Uh, this is something that we do on your behalf. You don't have to really worry about it, but it uses a mechanism called an action transform to be able to do that for us. And it's kind of an advanced concept within Inkling, uh, but it really allows us to translate what the brain wants to do to something that the simulator understands. And so when we have this translate bonsai action to sim action, that's what we're doing. We're kind of rounding those values, and that's what gets returned back to the brain. I'm sorry, to the simulator. So in... The first iteration of the ABCA model, we are actually using rewards and terminal conditions. In this case, for our terminal, we are saying if the model either exceeded capacity, we would return true, or if our time, meaning our AnyLogic model time, is greater than one, 
which could be one second, one hour, one day, depending on what you know the model step time was. In this case, it's hours, I believe. We would return true. So what that means is the brain gets one chance. There's one episode step or one iteration per episode for the brain to be able to kind of guess at what the value is going to be. And this helps uh, the training loop. We'll see that in just a little bit. We have our reward, which is looking at the cost of the product times the exceeded capacity. In this case, you'll see negative numbers because we want to uh, get the lowest cost that we can out of this. And here at the bottom is where we start to put all of these pieces together. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this concept. In this case, our concept is called optimize. We define that curriculum. We look at our source being that capital S simulator. We have an action called translate bonsai action into sim action. Again, that's that transform that's there. We have a reward that's called capital R reward. Doesn't matter what you call it. It just happens to be called capital R reward here. Same thing with our terminal condition. Uh, capital T terminal being the function name up above that we just looked at. And here we only have one lesson where we want to vary that arrival rate. And similar to what the action looked like where you had kind of those range of values, we can define this scenario within a lesson so that arrival rates can be any number from 0 0.5, 0.5 to 2.0. But we added this extra step, step of 0.1, meaning only the values of 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, all the way up to two would be valid. And we're keeping these other numbers fixed. Uh, so as each time we run this, we're gonna keep those values fixed here. So now that I have my Azure subscription, I kind of have an idea of what the AnyLogic model is. I have a little bit of an understanding about this inkling machine teaching stuff. And, uh, you know, you really want to get hands on and kind of understand what's happening here. If you go to preview.bonds.ai, you'll be prompted with a login page. And you'll sign in here. So you'll see your company name, you know, my company being Microsoft. You may have other names associated with that. Go to your subscription where you created it. In my case, it was in that co-internal subscription. And I had multiple workspaces uh, inside of that subscription, but the AO webinar bonsai space is what I created. Once you've selected all that, click get started. Inside of the bonsai platform, uh, this is now the, the bonsai dashboard where Arash was kind of showing you you know, how you get your workspace info. I can kind of change color schemes if I want to. I can do a number of things uh, that are here. Uh, maybe to kind of get started, you know, if you wanted to start with Carpool or Moab, uh, it's a way just kind of click through experience uh, before you kind of work on connecting your any logic model, just to kind of experience what that looks like. Uh, but once you're ready, you can actually just create an empty brain and we're just going to call this AL webinar. And you see a couple of tabs up here. You see the teach tab and the train tab. The teach tab is where I put my machine teaching code or that inkling code that we talked about. And I can actually just go right from GitHub. I don't necessarily need to download anything. I can copy all of this code and just paste it here. Uh, if I happen to mess up or, you know, happen to have some problems here, it does kind of pre-compile it. It will give you a warning, so it'll let you know if you kind of messed up. I'll add my comment back. Uh, so now everything is, is ready for me to connect Bonsai uh, to my AnyLogic model. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So here I am inside of any logic on my local machine. Once I have kind of everything configured, 
with my starts, steps, observables, etc. I'm now ready to kind of connect my model to the bonsai brain. And to do that, I go to this play button and I'm going to run this animated experiment. And I kind of get the nice little pop up of kind of what it's using, how it's uh, how it works. I click run. And I see it's connected to Bonsai in the Bonsai UI. Click the train button and select ABCA Sim. So over in the Bonsai dashboard, now that I click that play button and see the connection, underneath the simulators here on the left, I see that same ABCA Sim. And you see it says unmanaged underneath it. Unmanaged just means that you, the user, are what prompted this. The Bonsai service is not managing that connection for you uh, for things. When I want to start the training now on this brain, I can just go to this train button and click that ABCA sim. And it does take a minute or two to kind of wait for that simulator connection to take place. And if I switch back to my AnyLogic model, what you will see as this starts to connect is that Bonsai will kind of drive these changes in the values uh, as it kind of connects and disconnects through those different iterations. So you can kind of, it'll flash by your screen quite quickly. You know, that was 235 as the result. Uh, as this happens, you know, it's kind of since 293. And I see uh, a number of things that are kind of occurring in the background as I start to receive those state values. Here I, I see back on the dashboard, there was one. Because we had that uh, limitation of only one uh, iteration happening per episode. And so what that allows me to do is uh, it sort of connects, disconnects, connects, disconnects. And that's why I see that happening when this is running locally like this. And so the next step, now that I know my simulator is connecting, uh, my next step, and I get a little bit of warnings down here. The, the warning is okay. It's just saying that these values are out of range from what you told the brain that they would be. Uh, but it doesn't really affect the training. It's just going to uh, kind of pop that warning up so you can go in and fix something if you need to. Uh, the next step now that we are connected is to you know go through the process exporting that and we want to upload the model to bonsai so we can speed up this training process and have this go a lot faster to upload my any logic model uh, that exported headless version of that model that i've seen because of course i won't be able to do this when this works inside of a, a container in azure so that other kind of funky named part of a resource group in your subscription where we had that container registry and we had that Azure storage. Now is where we're sort of tying into the stuff that we created before. So I want to go out here and I'm next to Simulator, I see the Add Sim button and I select any logic and I can just take my exported file and I can copy it over and I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to create this simulator. And what's happening right now is it's taking that zip file, it's uploading it into that Azure storage uh, account that was created for you and making that available so that when we start training, these other things will sort of spin up on our behalf. So we see here that this simulator is queued, it's creating that archive. Uh, the nice thing is with the AnyLogic model, it's pretty small, so this all happens in a few minutes time to be able to create this. All right, now that it's been created, I see my simulator out here. I see my full path that got created in that container registry for me. Kind of an ugly looking name, but I see that it's in that same AL webinar bonsai space, azurecr.io, that's the Azure container registry. I can configure a few things here, how many instances I want to have this create. I'm gonna say 50. It's not a big sim uh, that requires a lot of uh, cores or a lot of memory, so I'm going to leave those at 1 and 2 gigs. I'm going to hit Apply here. Now, uh, you see this little package statement at the top. We want to include this package statement 
So when Bonsai trains, it knows how to kind of marry up the brain to that container, similar to what, when we clicked the train button. So I can just copy this value, go over to my inkling, and scroll down a bit to remember the simulators thing uh, statement here, and there was an empty line 59. I just want to paste in, uh, I'm use control V, my package name, where it matches the name as the simulator here. So now when I click the train button, I didn't have to go and select that sim. And actually I've closed any logic behind the scenes. Uh, that's actually not running on my machine anymore. Instead, what's happening now is the Bonsai service is going and creating container instances inside of my Azure subscription to be able to run this uh, training for me. So because I was having those warnings, I ended up creating a version 2. And version 2 just removes these ranges. Actually, I'm going to remove this range too. Uh, from the state values here. That's what I was getting those warnings about. And anytime I make a change to Inkling, it's going to want to uh, create a new version and restart. I still have that same package statement here, but I'm going to click Train, and this is going to go uh, a lot smoother for me, and I'll quickly see these uh, other instances starting up and how things flow into the, the dashboard for training. So you can see I've got 30 that quickly spun up here, and I had requested 50. Here, if I scroll down, uh, it's in increasing the number of connections. And I've got this little drop down here, simulator instance with just an ID. Uh, if I click that, I can see the speed of each of these uh, as they connect. And then uh, I see data flowing in, so I'm just seeing the reward for that particular one. They've got now 138 iterations per second. Uh, so when I look across, you know, some of these are at different speeds for things. I can add uh, an additional chart. So if I want to see kind of where the arrival rate is varying, you can kind of see these gray lines. Since the brain only has one shot to answer the question, these dotted lines represent the episodes uh, so each time you see a vertical uh, gray dotted line, those are episodes that are happening. That's why you just see like one iteration, two iteration kind of happening inside of that and what the values are associated with it. And so if I scroll down a bit, maybe I want to look at, uh, add another chart, what my process time would be. Or I can, I can, of course, add other things, but when I mix them together, they tend to kind of lose their, their meaning for me. Then I, of course, can look at my cumulative reward over time. And my goal in this scenario is to keep driving down uh, my cost uh, to the, to the uh, best value that I can achieve as part of this. So up at the top here now, I can see my training graph and my reward is going to kind of go up slightly. It's going to uh, start at the negative 200, go up to, it'll get to about negative 66 in this one uh, as it's trying to kind of you know, maximize my value uh, that I can get out of this for this cost savings. So I'm going to let this train and then I'll come back and show you how to take this brain and export it and, and Rash will show you how to plug it in for playback purposes in your AnyLogic model. I come back to my brain after brain training and I get a little message that my training is complete to resume, increase the total and or no progress iteration limit. So based on kind of the heuristics of the algorithm that's in here, the platform has decided that it is pretty much as good as it's going to get for this run. And it took just over 1.1 uh, million iterations. These little dots along the way, there's a, a purple dot and a gray dot. This is part of the Bonsai platform called the Champion Challenger uh, notion. 
And the idea with reinforcement learning is that there are opportunities that the algorithm can unlearn uh, what it has learned before and never really be able to make it back. And so Champion Challenger, we basically pit two neural networks against each other and we always keep the best one as it goes to make sure our algorithm stays in a positive light. So I can go back kind of to the very beginning of this and I can zoom in a little bit more if I want to get a better understanding. You can see there was a lot of kind of jumping around as the brain was going through its training process. And after not too long, so we're still at 63, uh, and eventually we got out to about $45 uh, as our final reward, 45.78 was our final reward. And now what I wanna do is I wanna validate this brain. I have two options to do that. Well, the first one is to do what's called an assessment. And doing an assessment is very similar to the way that we would do training in the sense that I have my any logic model. I would connect that model. The ABCA sim would pop up under here, just like we saw before. And then I would click start assessment, select my ABCA sim, and the simulator now is assessing instead of training. What assessing allows me to do is kind of see what does that end result neural network look like, be able to weigh the benefits of that, and still have the start, the episode start step events. So I can kind of start the simulator in different locations, but everything is, you know, from a neural network perspective, is still hosted in the Bonsai platform. Once I've decided, that I'm comfortable with this, you know, it assesses really well, I'm ready to export that and take it into my own decision support process, or if I wanna use the playback feature that's part of the connector inside of any logic, I click this export brain. And what export brain does is it's asking us, it's going to use that same container registry that we saw before, I always take out this little slash here and instead I just do a dash V3. It's a 64 bit, it's gonna be a Linux based uh, export that I do here. So once I click export, it doesn't take very long. It's going through that same process. It's actually taking the neural network and all of the components that are necessary to run that network, packaging it up in a container and putting it into that same container registry that I had out there before. So once this completes, our next step is going to be hosting this container in a place that is accessible for others to be able to use. Once the export finishes, I get a little pop-up here. And the pop-up is used, it's got some code for how to log in using the Azure CLI tool uh, into my Azure container. It's got a Docker pull to be able to pull this locally. So this is all if I want to do it locally and run it inside of my local host. And I'm gonna show you how to host this in Azure so that your teammates and others can, can get a hold of this as well. So the idea of taking a container and running it in Azure is not a, it's a pretty common occurrence for people that have you know, done this type of work before. And there's a big uh, kind of to-do, how to do this walkthrough, deploy a web app by using an image from an Azure Container Registry repository, which is where our image actually sits. So I'm gonna walk us through how to do that right now. Back in my Azure portal, inside of that same AL webinar resource group where my Bonsai workspace is, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new resource. And I'm going to choose a web app. I'm going to give that web app a name, AL Webinar. Has to be a unique name. There's a little check to verify. And it is a Docker container. It's a Linux container. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that same US West 2 region for that. Uh, it's asking me to create a plan. I don't have a plan yet, and I certainly don't need a premium one. 
I'm going to change the size. Maybe I just do a dev and test, and a B1 works pretty well. I don't usually do F1. The reason for that is, you know, if you're going to do a comparison to how an optimizer may work, it's just going to be a little bit slower. It's kind of up to you. I tend to do the B1 uh, for that. Click Next. My option single container or Docker Compose. Now it's asking my image source. So if I go my image source to a container registry, it's loading up all of my different registries that I have in my namespace. But AL Webinar Bonsai Space is that same container registry that I was using before from Bonsai. And it's asking me to choose an image. So here was that AL Webinar export that I did. And I've got that tag, that version 3 Linux AMD64. And I do not need a startup command for that. Click Next. I don't need any of this other stuff. I'm going to click Review and Create. All of this looks pretty good, so I'm going to click the Create button. And I can see my deployment has started. All right, now that my deployment succeeded, I can go to resource. And I'm not quite ready yet. Uh, when we publish the container, we publish it on port 5000. And so we need to map port 5000 to our website. I can go to under settings on the left here, configuration. And I need to add a new application setting. I always keep a little handy reference here, uh, but this is based on steps from this uh, docs.microsoft deploy a container uh, page. And the walkthrough there tells me uh, the website's port that I need to map it to. So here is the name, website underscore port, that I need to add as that setting. I'm going to add new application setting, website port, and I need to put 5000 as my port setting there. Once that's done, I click Save. It's going to ask me to reboot the application. I'll go to the overview just so I can grab the URL. Now, when I go to the URL, see there's nothing really there. And the reason for that is the docs are on the slash v1 slash doc slash index.html. So if I just take that and append that here, this is the swagger endpoint for that brain that we just exported. And I could click get and try it out. And this is going to give me an example curl command to run. Uh, usually what I do is I just take this curl command and I copy it and go over to a command prompt. And here I can see that based on this, uh, an arrival rate of zero, I'm getting a prediction that comes back for each of those values. And so when, uh, when I run this and I want to put my URL for playback inside of any logic, I'm going to use this slash v1 slash prediction for that playback option, and Arash is going to show us how to do that. As David just showed us, we can export a trained brain and then deploy it as an Azure web app. As you saw, we get access to the web app and the hosted brain via a URL. To get prediction, we just need to perform an HTTP request using the URL as the endpoint and the slash v1 slash prediction path. The Bonsai Connector Library can do this for you. All you need to do is to paste the prediction URL. To do this, so that you can see the trained brain controlling the simulation, all you need to do is to click on the Bonsai Connector object and check the playback checkbox. Then you put the web app URL with the prediction path appended as a string. If you run the animated experiment, you can watch the model run with the trained brain in control.
If you would like more information about Bonsai or how to use Bonsai in your solution, feel free to reach out to the Project Bonsai team off of the documentation website under resources. There's a get help button here. Uh, a number of things. There are community forums. There's some feature requests. Click this request consulting or training. Fill that out and a member of our team will get back to you uh, within just a day or two and reach out to talk about your particular question or solution to help Bonsai integrate into your model. Now that the informational segment of the webinar is finished, it's time to start the live Q&A session. Okay, um, thank you so much for uh, being with us so far. Um, I'm going to so thank for Tyler to compiling a list of questions that uh, I categorize in two categories. I first ask the questions that are bonds are related from David, and then I answer like a couple of questions that are related to any logic. But let's start with the first one, David. Uh, what are the attributes in the observation that weren't used? I think they are pointing to the, the fact that there were more attributes in the observation uh, than what we used. We only used arrival uh, rate. So can you give us some insight into that? Yeah, so we, when we started developing with that, uh, we started looking at all of those state values and our original inkling had everything inside of it. So you see that sim state still has that. But we discovered the brain really didn't need all of that information to be able to train effectively. We only needed that arrival rate. And so we created something called the observable state, which was a different type in inkling. And there's a conversion that happens on the back end inside of Bonsai to, to do that kind of inspection of the state between sim state and what's called the observable state. Uh, and that's what ultimately was used for training. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Second question is, in the context of Bonsai, what is the difference between an iteration and step? Uh, before you answer, I have to clarify that we, in any logic, we also use the term iteration. This is not what we call iteration. This is Bonsai iteration. So yeah, what is the difference between an iteration and step in Bonsai? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, in the, in the dashboard, you see it called an iteration inside of the any logic model you see something called an episode step they are similar to each other in the sense that a step is when an action occurs uh, and an iteration is when that information is sent back to the brain uh, so there, there's sort of a slight distinction between the two but you can effectively think of them as the same thing okay perfect uh, the next one is um if you were able to remove the ranges from the observation, what was the significance of having the ranges in the first place? That's a, that's a good question. And you notice I actually ran into a problem with the model when we were training having those ranges and I ultimately removed them. Uh, the reason for, for having the ranges in the first place in the state value is it will kind of guide the brain to know that here's the, the set of states that you can expect uh, during training. And so that kind of helps speed up the training. If you just put in uh, a number and you take away the ranges, uh, it gives the full you know, negative to positive uh, float 64 value that's possible there. So it's just a way to kind of scope those local things. Okay, perfect. And this is the last one. Um, when you make a new version of the inkling, like when you made a small change uh, in the inkling, does it force the training to start over from the beginning? It does, so it, it actually creates a new version of the brain. Uh, and so think of that as you're basically starting from scratch. And so now that you've sort of changed the rules for the brain, you're actually gonna go and start from the ground up on that retraining again for things. And so now it's got a sort of set of different conditions that we go after. Fantastic, thank you so much. So um, I have one question that is related to any logic and that is, uh, um, there are more, but I just chose this one. Why can't I just add the connector object directly into the model? So the answer to this is you can actually do everything manually without the wrapping process. So you can bring in the connector object yourself, can build all the classes, um, uh, basically build the, make the uh, get observable uh, function yourself and just fill the fields yourself. But what we decided to do was to providing this wrapper um, 
model, which simplifies the process by just instantiating one object into the to this uh, wrapper one. So that was the uh, intention there. Um, so Tyler, if you can please make me the presenter, I wanted to share uh, my screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so we are basically um, reached the end of the, the webinar. I wanna thank David and the um, rest of the Microsoft team for uh, their collaboration in, in this uh, project. And thank you, David, for sharing your insight about uh, deep reinforcement learning and machine teaching and bonsai with, with uh, our community and everybody else who is in this um, webinar. Uh, I also have to thank the rest of Microsoft team and both um, Anatoly Jereptev and Tyler Wolf Adam from any logic side that were involved in this project and make this connection happening. So um, Tyler is also helping us with the webinar as well. He is with us and answers some of your questions throughout the webinar. Um, with that said, uh, there are a couple of uh, last uh, words. Um, as you see on the screen, there are some uh, links and, and um, QR codes to where you can follow up with us. So you can see our artificial intelligence simulation webpage that you can uh, ask for follow-up information. We have a specific web page for uh, the Project Bonsai collaboration that you can go to and download some of the material that I've showed you, um, and also a link to the autonomous, autonomous systems uh, at Microsoft. Um, and as I said at the beginning, everything that we've done and showed, um, the URLs, links to all the downloadable material and all the assets that you need to replicate this, this webinar, and also the entire recording of this webinar will be uh, sent to you in the supplemental material that comes after the webinar. Um, and there are some um, unanswered questions that we didn't have enough time to compile and answer right now. So we also send the answers to those questions in the uh, follow-up material. You will also get uh, to see a short um, survey right after you finish the webinar. Uh, please help us with your feedback. It's, it's immensely valuable for us. Um, so I think that was the end of the webinar. And thank you again for your time today. Be safe and have a great rest of your week. Thank you.